Hey everyone, Nubkex here. We're going to look at the balance patch that came out uh, during the night in Europe last night, April 11th. Um, and yeah, we've got a whole bunch of changes here. I think a whole bunch of needed nerfs to some heroes and some kind of unexpected buffs, which are pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to talk about the things as well that I think are still missing and still like to see coming in soon. So first up, we got some changes to Falstad. Um, level 1, Gathering Storm. Added functionality, every hero Hammerang hits. Also returns 10 mana, and then a change to Wingman, which is uh, active, which that's the bribe one, and it's W, which reduces Lightning Rod's cooldown by 3 seconds. <clears throat> uh, then at level 4 is Updraft, now has added functionality as well. It removes the duration of shields granted by Barrel Roll, so they're just permanent shields now. So these are actually some really nice buffs to Falset overall. Uh, they're going to kind of go across a number of his different builds, like Q build. Focusing more on his E or focusing on the W, so that's quite nice. Um, and it's funny, Falstead's kind of come back into the meta a little bit, so hey, you never know, we might expect to be seeing more Falstead these days. He's been starting to pick, uh, they're starting to pick him up again in pro play. I think the power of that global, um, plus the kind of gradual nerfs to a lot of the other dominant ranged assassins, has definitely uh, done him some favors. So that's pretty exciting to see. So yeah, might be Falstead back in the meta soon. Uh, Phoenix, finally got some nerfs and some pretty large nerfs as well. Before we dive into this, I just need to say, because obviously this is a big topic of community discussion over the last few days. Is there any reason Blizzard could not have nerfed Phoenix after one week? I don't think so. I really think that they need to be on top of it and to do that appropriately. I think it's very clear after one week um, that I think it's very clear after a couple of days that Phoenix was very overtuned, that he was very, very powerful. Um, and then you have like several more days then to work out a number of ways to nerf him, get that out a week in. I mean, if you over nerf, you can buff him back up a little bit. It's fine. You can tweak it down. You can be cautious with the nerfs, but at least do something rather than leaving a hero that is incredibly overtuned, you know, 60% plus win rate across all levels of play. Just, I mean, it didn't affect me because we just, it just gets banned every game in Hero League, um, and Team League, right? But well, not in Team League and we get to pick him. Ha ha ha. But, um... Yeah, in quick match, it's just me just running rampant, and, and that's just not really fair, and it's not that's not fun. So Blizzard really needs to be on point, I think, a week after a hero, at least if they're grossly overpowered. If they're fairly balanced, fine, two weeks is fine. If they're grossly overpowered or grossly underpowered, I think one week is the sweet spot. I also don't like when they rapid buff a hero, like a couple of days after, like the Zarya thing was a disaster. She went from like the worst hero to totally overpowered. Anyway. Um, Phoenix, basic attack damage reduced from 96 to 86, so large nerf to his basic attack damage. Uh, Plasma Cutter, damage reduced from 145 to 135, again, pretty big, uh, pretty substantial nerf there. Uh, and then Planet Cracker, small buff, damage increased from 105 to 108. Um, they obviously consider Planet Cracker to be slightly underperforming in comparison to Purification Salvo, but not by much, it's a very, very small change. Um, talents then, he did get some buffs on some of his later talents, but the early ones have mostly been mostly been nerfed a couple of exceptions but at level one advanced targeting q damage bonus reduced from 0.75 to 0.5 so this is um when you hit heroes with your q you get bonus basic attack damage uh, and then when you get 30 bonus damage your q spins an extra time uh, and then the maximum bonus damage reduced from 75 to 60 so they have obviously you can see that the maximum is still a bit higher so the quest will go on for longer um it's also going to take you longer to hit that 30 point mark now, right? You're going to have to get more hits with your Q. So getting that quest reward of the extra spin is also going to take longer. So it's going to be a much longer quest overall. Obviously, if you're getting points when your Q hits and the reward is that your Q hits more often, once you finish that first reward, the second part of the quest comes a lot faster because you got more Q spins. But now the first part's going to take longer and they've also increased the length of the second part. So yeah, it's going to be an awful lot longer overall. Um, I think that's fair because I think that was probably the best one overall at level 1 by a good chunk. Arsenal Synergy then, it was the best one because it affected um, PvE as well as PvP. Um, Arsenal Synergy, damage bonus increased from 100% to 175%. So they really cranked up the damage bonus uh, on this one. So that's I think when you hit 3 repeater cannon attacks on a target. Your next phase bomb attack will do bonus splash at size I think. And now massively increased damage. Um, and I think that's probably okay as well. So it'll be interesting to come back to his level 1s. 
and see what's going to be best. Now, level 4, emergency protocol traits. So this has been nerfed. Movement speed bonus reduced from 30% to 25%. This is when his shield breaks. He gets movement speed for 5 seconds. Slightly toned down. Not going to be mount fast for 5 seconds anymore. <laughs> Just slightly slower. Slightly slower. Level 7, combat advantage. With the Q, damage bonus against slow targets reduced from 50% to 40%. So again, just nerfing down that damage output. Level 13, quite a few changes. Auxiliary shields, shield regen reduced from 20 to 15% of basic attack damage dealt. Uh, dampening field, spell armor increased from 15 to 20. I believe this is spell armor that you have while your shield is active. Rapid recharge, shield recharge increased from 20% to 40% of healing received. So this one received a very large uh, buff, a very large buff. That might actually be one to look at now. Um, depending on what sort of healer you have. Uh, then level 20, Singularity Charge. Repeater Cannon bonus attack speed increased from 50 to 100%. Uh, An Unconquered Spirit, the shield amount increased from 600 to 800, uh, 800 as well. Um, so pretty nice little buffs to both of those level 20s to make them compete with just the damage output one. I think those are both fine as well. It felt a little bit weak on those two before, so I think this feels a little bit better. Um, this isn't as strong as it sounds because you're already getting... Like, you're already at, what's it, 250% attack speed. It was pushing up to 300%. Now, instead, it's going from 250 to 350%. So, it's definitely noticeable. But, um, yeah, I think it'll make it more competitive in terms of damage with the other one. So, that's kind of nice as well. All right. <clears throat> Phoenix proving himself quite powerful, mainly due to his cap uh, capability for consistent damage output. We're happy with how he plays. We're making a few changes to bring his damage in line and address talent imbalances. Yeah, please faster next time, Blizzard. Thank you. Hansa has been nerfed again. Hooray. Um, natural agility is trait. The cooldown has been increased from 20 to 25 seconds. Dragon Strike with the bad ultimate has been damage increased from 64 to 70. It's probably still bad. Um, talents at level 4. Serrated arrows. W. Bonus damage against minions, mercs, and monsters reduced from 150% to 100%. Thank you, Blizzard. Finally. Um, I mean, it'll take a little bit of time to test it out and see how strong Hanzo is. He's still going to be good, but at least this will rein in the whole, oh, your team got Hanzo and Cursed Hollow. <laughs> you just broke the map because you can race Merc camps and bosses obscenely fast. Sorry, there's no real macro or strategy anymore. Hanzo ruins it all. Or BOE, <laughs> you're twice as fast as, as most other heroes at killing the uh, immortal. LOL strategy. What is that? We don't need it. So yeah, I'm glad that they've they've nerfed this down. So we'll see where Hanzo's going to end up. Um, we will see. Li Ming got some changes too. At level 1, Aether Walker reduced the time required after taking damage to get that uh, you know reduced and free teleport um, from 5 to 4 seconds. A little buffed at that one at level 1, which I think is not... I think it's actually a decent talent, but uh, it's she's got pretty good level 1 talents actually. So there's lots of competition there. So nice little buff to that. Then Dominance, been changed. Actually, quite drastically, really. Takedowns now restore 30% of missing health. It used to be, what was it, 25% of your total health. Now it's 30% of your missing health. So, I mean, unless you're literally almost dead, it's going to restore less. And the higher health you are, it's going to restore far less. Um, I'm actually okay with this change overall. Uh, dominance has been very, well, dominant as a talent choice. I think this makes it a little bit more situational. Um, which I think is fine. I'm actually okay with this, and I kind of like that change. Nova, then. A bunch of changes for her. Level 7, Perfect Shot. Added functionality. Each hero hit also grants an additional precision sniper stack. So this will, I guess, make it easier to stack up your... I, that's her baseline quest, isn't it? I haven't played Nova now since she was nerfed down again. Um, I'm pretty sure that's your baseline quest, so it will help you stack that quest faster if you do drop those stacks. That's kind of nice. Um, level 13 then, Ionic Force Field. The armor duration increased from 2 to 3 seconds. Double tap um, f uh, increases pinning shots cooldown by 2 seconds. So they're trying to rebalance this tier. I think double tap was just a bit too strong overall. Um, so it kind of, kind of took the limelight there. So a bit more balance on this tier now. I think double tap is still really good. That's two charges of your pinning shot, but the cooldown is, is a fair bit longer. Um, I think it's still the way to go. And once you get rewind as well, level 20, it's it's not that big of a problem. But it's an interesting tweak. Level 16 then has some interesting changes too. So lethal decoy, damage bonus on hollow decoy reduced from 35 to 30%. Crippling shot, the armor negation reduced from 25 to 20. 
And then explosive round is buffed. Area of effect damage increased from 50 to 70%. So they're trying to move Nova away from that bursty blow up into a bit more sustain, which is pretty interesting. Um, I think these changes are okay as well. Um, I mean, I'm not sure that Nova precisely needed all these nerfs, but it's okay. Um, I mean, one of the big things for me is that you're going into, like, level 16 is followed fairly closely by level 20. So you're kind of going into a massive burst potential with Nova with Rewind. So that's one thing that this does, is it does target that Rewind a little bit and makes it a little less dominant, right? Because you're not getting even more armor reduction and even more hollow decoys at massive damage. I think it's still the best, but it does bring a little bit of balance there. So I'll be interested to see what they do with Nova. Not 100% sure on her overall, really. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there you go. I mean, Rewind is often just the best talent on the tier it's at. Tracer got nerfed this time. Hooray. So Blizzard changed her last time. I think I actually think they're very good changes to Tracer the last time, right? They reduced her mobility, they reduced her burst damage, and they increased her health and just her sustained basic attack damage. Um, I, I think um, Math of the Storm, it's a great blog. I think he described it very well as normalization, which is toning down some hero strengths, which are just a bit too, they're a bit too strong. They're a bit obnoxious. They're very annoying to play against. Um, and then to make them more normal. So in a way, you're giving up some of those heroes unique strengths, but you're adding like a lot more counterplay or a lot more enjoyment to playing against them. I think that's good. So I liked what they did with Tracer, uh, reducing that crazy. Oh, yeah, well, she can just dash around you and you can't catch her with your skill shots and she's going to burst you and you're dead. LOL. I <laughs> bet you wish you picked a hero with point and click. Sorry, you didn't. Um, I, I like that they've reduced that down, which is great. But they, you know, the buffs that they gave her to compensate, she was still extremely dominant in terms of win rate and probably a bit easier to play as well. Um, so I like that they've toned her down here. Health reduced, health regen reduced, and basic attack damage slightly reduced. Um, so I think Tracer's still going to be good, but this should make her more niche, which I think is where she ought to be. Uh, Multi-class, Varian. Okay, <laughs> okay. So health has been increased, baseline. Health regen has been increased, and the bonus health and bonus health regen for Taunt have been reduced. So this is essentially a buff to his level 1 to 4 uh, laning phase, and then a slight buff as well to his Twin Blades and his Colossus Smash. In my opinion, Varian is still an absolute disaster in terms of balance, where at high levels, Taunt is the only viable choice. Um, I, I really, really expected them to remove the max HP reduced penalty on Colossus Smash, which just doesn't make any thematic sense based off Arms Warriors and WoW, which he's based off of anyway. Doesn't make any sense there. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, I just feel, I feel a little frustrated with the Varian rework. It's obviously the challenge of balancing a hero across multiple difficulty levels. You know, I think Twin Blades is, is okay, or even perhaps very strong on lower levels of play, but certainly when you get to higher levels, it's taunt and it's only taunt. Colossus Smash is absolutely terrible because you're just too squishy. You jump in and you die because you've got like 1.25 seconds protected. You've got no escape. You've got no HP either. Um, and then you're probably killed afterwards. Uh, you're like a Tyrande without... You're like a melee Tyrande and Tyrande's already bad. So yeah, it's just real bad. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, Twin Blades, good at lower levels, not so much at higher levels. Uh, taunt's the only way to go. So... All right, nice changes, but I'd like to see an awful lot more. Um, I'd like to see an awful lot more. And honestly, a little disappointed with how the rework has turned out. That uh, Okay, we reworked this hero, but when I go to play the game, there's only one one heroic that I can choose. That feels that feels pretty bad, I think, anyway, for a multi-class. Uh, then over to specialists. Medivh nerfed, which is great. I think this is great. Um, now, they went a little bit of a different way from what I was expecting, but here we go. Level 7, Force of Magic, bonus spell power increase from 20 to 25%. So this is when you block a certain amount of damage, I think, with your W. It gives Medivh um, spell power. Um, I think it can stack twice as well. Uh, it's pretty substantial. Um, of course, that only affects the damage from his Q. Uh, as far as I know, it might slightly increase the healing from his W. Not actually 100% sure. <laughs> But um, this has been buffed up. Arcane Explosion, this has been the standout. Arcane Explosion combined with Circular Protection has been so busted, it's not even funny. So the base damage of this has been reduced from 90 to 80, and the max damage has been reduced from 350 to 315. 
And then crucially over at level 13, let me cover these as well uh, before I talk about this overall. The circle of protection now increases force of will's cooldown by two seconds. And reabsorption, the heal amounts have been increased from 60 to 70%. Um, circle of protection makes your force of will apply to everyone around the target. So the completely obscene combos that were going on was like you get a bunch of people run in circle of protection they each get hit like let's say the team fights engaged uh oh they all explode with arcane explosion they've all been hit and then suddenly it was you know this is just base stats as well this is before level scaling suddenly it was 90 plus 350 damage from maybe three targets in a giant aoe around them hitting half of the enemy team it was just insane it was it was really broken and imbalanced so Blizzard's done an interesting thing. I think this is a massive nerf to Circular Protection, increasing the cooldown. So very curiously, before the rework, Circular Protection applied an untalented, an untalented force of will. Blizzard could have gone back to that, but instead they've decided that they do want it to apply the talented force of will, um, and they're just going to make the cooldown very, very punishing. I think this is interesting because they obviously want the circle protection count, uh, interactions with these level 7 talents. I forget what the other level 7 one is. Um, yeah, I can't remember. But yeah, they, they, they want these interactions. They want that arcane explosion with circle protection. They want our, uh, circle protection with force of magic. They want those synergies to happen, which is quite interesting. Um, I'm not sure I would have gone that route myself, but that's the route they're going. I guess we'll have to see how it pans out. I think this is such a large nerf that it probably will work out. Uh, one thing I'm curious about as well is the reabsorption buff. Uh, like, that's the second time in a row that they've buffed this talent. Um, I'm not sure. Like, I don't want... I think level 13 is a pretty interesting row. Um, so I'd like to see... I don't want to go to pre re I'm kind of negative about this because, you know, pre-rework Medivh was all about reabsorption and the other talents were ignored. I don't want that to happen again. So I'm kind of like, oh, it's okay if reabsorption is a little bit weak for a while. Uh, I don't know that it is. Circular protection has just been so OP with Arcane Explosion. We haven't really seen much else. Um, but yeah, I think these are nice changes to Medivh. Um, toning down this combo is good. We'll see if that's enough. Um, I feel like he's still certainly at higher levels going to be very strong. Um, I guess we'll have to see. I guess we'll have to see. But I'm glad that they nerfed this. They nerfed it a tiny bit in the previous patch and it was like ridiculously small nerf for how broken it was. These are much more appropriate changes and certainly gives us a good spot to move on forwards from with more nerfs or changes in the future as needed. Sylvanas then. This one's going to be a surprise to I think to a lot of people. Basic attack damage increased from 85 to 90. However, black trait, uh, black arrows, your traits, your abilities will no longer disable structures. You can only disable structures with your basic attacks now. So your abilities will disable minions and mercs. But yeah, you need basic attacks to disable structures, which is a very, very large nerf. It's a very large nerf. Part of our ongoing quest to increase counterplay, curb frustration when playing against certain heroes. We're changing Sylvanas' base, uh, black arrows trait so her abilities no longer disable structures. This effect is incredibly powerful and in the past has limited how battlegrounds can be designed and played. Realize that turning off enemy structures is an important part of Sylvanas' identity, so rather than remove this functionality completely, we're addressing it in such a way she now has to put herself in danger to get maximum value. This should allow more counterplay for opponents when Sylvanas is pushing, enable us to improve her teamfight capabilities, which we're doing initially via a small basic attack damage buff, to keeping an eye on her performance, ready to make further tuning changes as needed. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, I think that's a fine change, honestly. It doesn't bother me too much. I think she's probably pretty weak now without this. Um, like, just the power of being able to to disable multiple structures, you know, with a single W through the enemy. Like, let's say you're in Battlefield of Eternity, you've got reduced cooldown on your W when it bounces to heroes at level 4. You throw in your W, it hits the tower, it spreads to the other tower on the front, then it hits the minions, it spreads to the keep, it spreads to the heroes, it spreads to everything, you're getting cooldown reduction, you do it again. You know, that's a lot of structure disabling. And also the fact that it's a dot, it ticks, it ticks, it ticks. And while it's ticking, the structure is completely disabled. Then the disable lasts a second or so after. I can't remember what it is. I think it's one second now. Um, it lasts a second after that dot expires. So it gives you a lot of downtime on those structures. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's a massive change. This is a massive nerf. Um, I wouldn't expect to see any, I mean, we haven't seen any Sylvanas play at high levels in ages. 
um certainly in europe i don't th i don't i literally don't think i've seen her i've seen her once this season when we got like some weird late night game with someone who's in diamond one i think and he picked sylvanas and fed um <laughs> that's the only time i've seen sylvanas uh i'm not gonna that's not gonna change you're gonna see her less um but yeah we'll see i think that it's more of a concern at lower levels at the moment i don't know if she's been super dominant or what but um yeah sylvanas we'll see we'll see where she goes in the future but i think this is fine and again i love this though i love that Blizzard is intentionally working on this. Um, we'll come to Warriors and Supports now in a second, because we need stuff to say about that. There's stuff missing here. And Supports, Karazine buffs. Health increased slightly. Health regen increased slightly. And Transcendence, the heal, has been increased slightly as well. So I think these are nice changes to Karazim. Um, Obviously, you know, Iron Fist is still pretty dominant. Uh, so nice little buff to Transcendence, make that a bit more appealing. Uh, and then the HP buffs are quite nice as well. So yeah, nice little buff to him overall. And then Malfurion nerfs to Malfurion. So the heal amount reduced on regrowth from 400 to 380. The Moonfire heal has been reduced from 140 to 135. And then Strangling Binds, the heal reduction duration has been increased. So a buff on that level for talent. Um, I don't think it's actually that good still. I mean, it's okay, but it's not great. Um, so yeah, just small, small nerfs to Malfurion, which I think is fine. In my opinion, the support role is a, still a little bit of a mess at the moment. Um, after these changes, I think Stukov is definitely the best support. Probably, almost definitely the best support. Stukov is a bit obnoxious. And like I said, like this is something that bothers me quite a lot. You know, counterplay and frustration. That giant AoE silence that Stukov can put down semi-permanently is super frustrating to play against. Silence effects, I think, are really annoying. So yeah, I hopefully they take a big look at Stukov coming up soon. Um, you know, Malfurion maybe will need some more nerfs, but maybe not. We'll see. And then you've got other supports. Like it just feels bad. I think at the moment you've got a lot of supports that feel very underwhelming. It's like okay, Malfurion and Stukov do loads of healing, and then they also provide really powerful CC. And then there's me who provides decent healing but no CC at all, and that feels pretty bad. Um, so yeah, I definitely think we need another look at the supports, certainly at higher levels, like I've said before, the support variety is very low. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's going to change up a little bit. So I'm hoping for some large changes to supports, uh, coming up soon. I'm okay with it not being now. I personally would have liked to see a bit of a nerf to Stukov here, but, uh, I'm okay with it, I guess. Over in Warriors, a couple of surprise changes here. Number one, Chen getting some changes. The so level one accumulating flame. Adjusted the quest reward functionality, you gain 15 armor per hero ignited with Breath of Fire, and this lasts for 3 seconds. So that is pretty powerful. That's pretty damn strong. Uh, freshest ingredients, health regen granted by gathering regen globes, no longer caps at 30, so that gives you again more late game power, which is nice. Level 4 keg toss, bonus damage per hero hit with your W increased from 3 to 4 uh, on your W. And then bonus damage maximum increased from 60 to 80, so that's nice too. And then purifying brew. Added functionality, spell armor persists as long as Chen has fortifying brew shields. So some pretty nice changes to Chen over here. I actually think that Chen, as a niche hero, can be very powerful. I think that's okay as well. Again, going back to this kind of frustrating to play against, I think if Chen was super strong, it'd be very annoying. <laughs> he'd be really annoying. But I like him as a niche hero. Um, I think, you know, level four, maybe you have to look at it. I feel like at the moment, Ring of Fire perhaps still feels a bit too strong. Just that added wave clear is just so important for laning at the moment. The problem with Chen is that he gets wrecked by certain laners. Like, if you play against Sonya, you literally won't damage her. Um, like, she'll just heal it up straight away. Like, he's, as a solo laner, he doesn't bring tons of wave clear. He doesn't bring half as much wave clear as some of the others. And he's got pretty bad matchups into Sonya, Malthiel, a lot of the powerful ones at the moment that just kind of out-damage, out-sustain, out-soak him. Um, you know, out-rotate him as well. So that's kind of the problem with Chen. Um, but when you do get him into a lane where he's pretty good, or when you combine him with Abathur, <laughs> he can be pretty decent. So yeah, that's fun. I mean, check out, I'm going to have a Genji video up in the next couple of days where we got a Chen on our team, and you can kind of see that in action. I had a Chen video a week ago as well, if you want to see some Chen. But yeah, Chen's pretty cool. Uh, I like the changes to level 1s as well. They're nice. This could be really strong, so that's one to keep an eye on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this Purifying Brew. Again, this could be really good as well, you know, giving nice spell armor. That's going to last quite a while. That's pretty cool. I like that um, because Brewmaster's balance is perhaps a bit too strong there even still. So yeah, nice little tweaks to him and kind of unexpected, but very welcome, I think. 
Uh, Dehaka, adaptation buffed, cooldown reduced from 60 to, uh, 90 to 80. Uh, level 1, Enduring Swarm. Lots of buffs over, over here, by the way. Spell Armor, increased from 40 to 50. That's a Spell Armor while your W is active. So that's becoming a very appealing talent. It's been buffed, buffed a, couple, a couple of times. Level 4, Lurker Strain. The slow duration has been increased from 2 to 3 seconds, and that's kind of nice. Um, you're probably still going to go for some of the healing things at level 4, though. And Hero Stalker has been buffed. Enemy heroes hit by Dark Swarm grant 1 Essence, so that's very nice. That could make a large difference. Um, to how people are playing the hack and more of a team fight focus and then ferocious stalker at 13 which is i believe your damage bonus while your movement ability is active so kind of like burrow into the fight and go in with big damage from your w i think that's what that is has been buffed from 40 percent to 50 percent so i quite like that you know they're they're trying to push him in a little bit more of a different direction this more aggressive de Haka, kind of like okay well how about i mean if you combine these these three talents, for example, Enduring Swarm, Hero Stalker, and Ferocious Stalker, it's like, all right, how about you burrow in deep behind the enemy backline, you dive them with your W, you start generating loads of essence, you got spell armor, and you're doing tons of damage. Nice, you know, it's a, that's a kind of a different style of play as well. And you got adaptation to keep you alive if they focus you after that. You know, I, I think that's nice, adding a bit more variety into Dahaka. I think that's cool, and, and again, kind of surprising, but kind of welcome. The Auric then, small buffs to him, basic attack damage increase. This is pretty important, actually, because obviously his basic attacks does two cleaves and then one bonus damage, so you're getting a lot more. Uh, that's probably a bigger buff than it looks like. And then Drain Hope, the cooldowns reduced from 11 to 10 seconds. I think that's a nice change as well, and makes some of those W talents, too, a lot more appealing. So that is cool. I like that for the Auric as well. Uh, he's very strong still. I think he's really good in the late game, and I think he's a great hero. But his laning has been pretty weak, um, so I, I like these changes. You know, so that's a couple of that's a few solo laners, you know, um, that have been buffed up. So that's nice that Blizzard is aware that there isn't a ton of variety at the moment in solo laning, and they want to improve it. Um, speaking of, Terial has been changed. Um, so Ardent Restoration, this is the regen, uh, basic attacking one, has been buffed uh, a little bit. Stalwart Angel, the armor has been increased, but the duration has been reduced. This is bonus damage while your Q is out um purge evil uh basic damage has been buffed i forget what this is i think it's per hero hit with your smite it buffs the basic attack damage so they want to increase that then burning halo which is damage while your q is out damage has been increased bonus damage after teleporting has been buffed but the bonus damage duration has been reduced then um smite the wicked uh cooldown recharge rate has been increased from 100 to 125 percent but the duration after teleporting has been reduced from 3 to 2. So uh, we're making adjustments focused on the viability of some materials' talents. In particular, Sword of Justice, this is the one, I think it's at 13, where you throw out your sort of your, your Q, you can teleport to it, and then it, it drops a, a teleport point, a sword, at where you just came from. So you, you basically keep that bonus of having that up. So, for example... Yeah, they're trying to encourage that. So we're addressing this, taking a few talents, Stalwart Angel, Burning Halo, Smite the Wicked, increasing their synergy with Sword of Justice by increasing the bonuses Tyrael receives while Eldruin is out, but reducing the bonuses for teleporting. So yeah, ba they're basically they're trying to, to unthrone um, Holy Ground uh, by kind of adding new synergies, which is pretty interesting. This should enhance sort of Justice's play style, allowing players to teleport into a fight, still having an active Eldrwins. So yeah, I, I think this is really interesting, very different, and very cool, because um, they had the Tyrael rework, and I thought it was pretty nice, but it is a bit cookie-cutter, so I like that they're trying to break the mold here a little bit, add a little bit more of a different play style for Tyrael, and like I said, I think it's really nice. We've got kind of these focus on some of these warriors, you know, opening up a bit more of that soul lane diversity. I think that's great. So pretty excited to see these changes. Um, I'm very excited to see these changes because I think, you know, the goal obviously with any talent rework is to encourage diversity in builds and in play styles. And certainly I think that, you know, the Tyrael one fell, unfortunately, a little bit short in how it turned out in the end. And we also have Zarya buffs, and that's the last hero that's being buffed. Health increase, health regen increase, small increases to both. A uh, small increase to her Q damage, and then actually big cooldown reduction, 80 to 60 seconds on Graviton Surge. So this might bring Zarya quite a bit back in. We could expect to see a lot more of her, especially on, let's say, her really strong maps like Braxis. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. So that is pretty interesting, I think. Um, so yeah, there we go. Those are the changes, some big changes. Now, I would say, in terms of Warriors... Very noticeably missing are changes to Garrosh and Diablo, who I think are a bit too strong right now. Diablo just does ridiculous amounts of damage. I think 
I, I kind of, I can't quite remember, but I was trying to think about this as I was sitting down. I think probably what happened is that he wasn't as strong in the double support meta, but now that we've moved into more of that you know, double warrior meta, I think that Diablo is just, he's just turned out to be crazy powerful. Um, so yeah, really expecting some Diablo nerfs. And like I said, in terms of reworks before, you know, Diablo's rework has been a bit of a disaster because he's totally cookie cutter at the moment. There's zero build diversity right now. It's very poor. It's in fact probably worse than his build diversity was before the change. So I'd expect some pretty big changes to Diablo next patch. I really hope there are. I'd expect changes to Garrosh. I, people did spot like a different animation for Garrosh's Q um, in the spotlight for Deckard Kane. So perhaps we could see some larger changes to Garrosh in the Deckard Kane patch, which should be out on PTR on Monday. So stay tuned for that. I'll have you all the info on that on the channel as soon as we know it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm expecting with that and I'm expecting some changes to supports. But overall, fairly happy with um, the hero changes that we have here. Um, I think it's a good, certainly first step. But like I said, I think I would have preferred to see a lot of this stuff last week as opposed to having to wait two weeks for some of this stuff. You know, things like, you know, things like the Tracer, things like Mediv, things like uh, Phoenix and Hanzo that are just so obviously not good for the game that have just been left there untouched. I really would like to see that stuff changed at a faster rate. But hey, there you go. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about these changes. That is the balance patch. Again, another balance patch expected on Monday in PTR, so I'll see you all then for that. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.